everyone and welcome to the Brookfield Selectmen's meeting of Thursday, August 24th, 2017. If you would like to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like a, a motion to approve some different withholding expenses and payroll expenses. Yep. Uh -huh. Go okay. for it. Uh, okay, we would like to approve a withholding warrant for seven thirty seventeen for one hundred and nine thousand thirty two dollars and eleven cents, and also an expense warrant for eight ten seventeen for twenty nine thousand nine hundred and seventy two dollars and thirteen cents. Be probably death. Another express Good warrant morning, office. for eight ten seventeen for one thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. A payroll warrant for eight fifteen twenty seven for seventy four thousand eight hundred and eight and twenty six cents. Approved an expense warrant for eight fifteen twenty seven for one thousand two hundred ninety one dollars and forty two cents. And approved expense warrant for. Eight twenty-one seventeen for a hundred and nine thousand four hundred and seventy dollars and thirty-six cents. You have that motion, but with the exception. Sure. Of you put that away from the typing. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try. I can try it. Should we okay. move the phone over on the table? Let's I'll, do that. I will. Um, okay. Oh. Can you hear us now, Beth? Go ahead. Okay. So. I just. So, I just, um, Beth, I had just made a motion to approve uh, some uh, withholding warrants, expense, and payroll, and the Cl Clarence made the motion, and we need a second. I'm just hanging Okay, I can second that. Great. Right. Okay, no discussion on these? Yeah, just quickly, those, okay. it didn't mean 27, it meant 17. So that there were two, the, the one, two, three, fourth, and fifth one were. Oh, 815, 17, and 815, 17 to. Oh, yeah, support. they should be 5th, 17. Right. Oh. Absolutely. Okay, so all right. Given that, I will make that motion. Okay. Uh, uh, any, any discussion on any of this? <clears throat> all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, then we have, um, we have announcements. The Northern Construction plans to begin work on the Dunbrook Bridge on September 11th. Please be advised the bridge will be closed from 6 a.m. Monday, September 11th and expected to remain closed at least until September 30th. Please plan your route accordingly. And do you have any other announcements that we want to no. make? No. Okay. okay. Uh, public access? I'll do that, I guess. Okay. What, uh, I spoke to you yesterday about the my personal file cabinet in the kitchen. The locks were cut off of it. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to me why that was done without giving me notice when I advised the advisory board that that was my personal cabinet with my locks? They right. have their own personal cabinet in there, and I told them that they I do not have a key to it. Okay. Well, <clears throat> my understanding <clears throat> that happened on what parent was that Monday that that happened. Was it Monday or Tuesday? It was Tuesday. Tuesday, all right. Tuesday. My understanding, uh, Maureen, who is the secretary for the advisory board, was in, and she said the advisor, uh, advisory board told her that you had said that there weren't, you had lost the key to both of those cabinets and there was advisory board things in them. And she was advised by the advisory board to come up and, you know, see what was in that cabinet. And so I gave the authorization to have it, the locks cut, because those were, um, you know, if it, there was a, uh, advisory board information that, that they could use, and it should come out. So that that's what happened. Well, first of all, there was no information in there for the advisory board. That was all my yeah. documents. Well, number two, were, number two, Linda, mm -hmm. Bobby Barnes has the keys to that cabinet as well as I did for backup. Well, he and I spoke to the whole advisory board and told them that I have the keys to this one and this is my cabinet. 
Well, I told him I did not have the keys to the other one. No, it was we very, were, very clear. We were told, and she was told. You did anyone call me and say, hey, we want to get into that cabinet. The advisory board wants to see what's in there. Did well, anybody we call me from this town hall? Yes or no? You will I call. Personal yeah. It's No, it's personal. It's not personal. It's just stuff from the advisory board. The thing was that no, she, was, she was told that it was personnel i mean that it was advisory board information and she okay was told fine did anybody right so all you had to do was call me and say dave you get the locks off yes, of it please we were told we, we didn't know that that was you your were told cabinet. but you should have called me and asked me directly you stated you stated no that's, I, I didn't say anything i didn't make any of those statements <clears throat> that you had lost all those keys you that's not, not true i did not make that so statement that's what i went under mm -hmm. I don't think that this has anything to do with this meeting. This is public access, okay? I'm a resident yeah, you, of this you town, have, you have and I was on that board, and is this the way, is this the way we conduct things? It's bad enough you got a witch hunt going on, and you know it's going to, another thing I'm going to talk to you about, is you, Clarence, are going to cost this town 65000 plus by the time you get done on your witch hunt. Taxpayers' money. Yep, maybe. So, it, so anyway, I just think it wasn't right what you did about cutting the locks off. Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. it is my understanding that the advisory board, in fact, did reach out to Mr. Holcraft, and that Mr. Holcraft, mm -hmm. in fact, did not uh, comply or uh, respect the res mm -hmm. wishes of the current advisory board. So as far as I'm concerned, he has taken what he believes to be his, we're moving on. Okay, now let me straighten you out, Mr. Schneider. That's no, a total lie, wait, because wait. the advisory board did not reach out to me. I went and spoke to them directly. Yeah. The first well, night they had their meeting. My understanding was true. The same as So before you did said. that, you didn't reach out. No one from this office reached out to me, did they? That's that's the key right there. But you were, they were told so. that there was advisory board information in there, and there was no. That's fine. I don't care. There's no nothing locks. in there that they, they could have anything no, they want. They, they were told <clears> there were no locks. I mean, no. I was to right open there. You can locks. ask the members. I told them right there. Well, and all you do is say, Dave, we want to get in the cabinet. You come up and, um, and take your locks off. It's been done. It's over with. Well, I know that, but that's what, the point. What do we do now? We no, that's the, that's the point it. of Dex that that's how this town is running, though. That's what I'm saying to you. All you have to do is say, Dave, can you come up and take your locks off? In corporate America, I believe you have six hours well, to take your personal belongings so. away from But But the thing is, <laughs> they were told there was no key, so this is why they were cut. How could they say that when I told them directly? To the whole meeting. I'm just, you're, you're, I'm just the, the complaint is, is with the advisory board. It's, it's with the advisory board. Right, so I have the two locks. So the two locks know. that you put back when I have them, with no keys. I don't know anything about. So your if keys you want to give me two, two of my give me my locks back, then I can give you those two locks back. Your your but, locks are up here. Obviously, they were cut. So what good are they, Cam? Is my point. That's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. right. So if you want yeah. to give me two new locks, that's fine, and I'll give you your, your other two locks well, back. Maybe you should go in to see the advisory board okay. on the next meeting, I will do and that. you should tell mm -hmm. them and tell them that you never had said that. Okay. And because we can't really do anything, because it's all hearsay right now with us and what I was told. Right, but the key point mm -hmm. that I just made three times was you could have just Karen could have called up and said, "Dave, you have the keys, or do you not have the keys?" That was not done. Right. I, I'm not admitting to anything. So, no, oh, it, it's not proper for this meeting. No, it's, it, not. it's a it's a complaint for the yeah. advisory board. They had a you, yeah. need to get into yeah. those they cabinets. Had a need if Mr. Right, has I an issue with the advisory yeah. board, then that then it's a problem right. because Linda and Karen are the ones who I was speak, speaking to about this situation. So it it, it is so applicable for this meeting. Only, can, can I ask a question here? Is the only is the only lock to Mr. Holcraft the two locks? Yeah, there's two locks, Beth, and they were and they were cut. So, so, so and then what? Like master lock? Can, can we first look at the locks and move on? Okay, so one of the no, so I'm not ready to move on. Yet. Who cut? Who authorized to cut the locks off? You said that this is not part of the meeting here today. Who authorized to cut the locks I off? Huh? I think yeah. Okay. I authorized. So, to cut so the this lock? is the proper place for me to be bringing this up, Clint. No. We were told. I'm just telling right, you, so thank you for the not, that's it. Move on. That we have to move yeah. on with this. Okay. We just can't right, keep going point, over though. this. I made my point that the way you're running this town, it's not going to. You know, I'm not going to accept mm -hmm. it. So, oh, okay. all right. All right. Yeah. My next, my next topic. Do we allow our, our highway workers and town employees to smoke, to smoke while they're working? That's a question. Not, <clears throat> not that I know of, because we have a no smoking ban. 
Okay. All right. So why do people in the highway department working on this smoking all the time in the trucks and, and when they're working? I don't know. That I can't answer that because I haven't mm -hmm. seen them do it. Take that under advisement. We'll take that under advisement. What does that mean under advisement? Are you going to speak we'll, to them? Yeah, we will um, we'll investigate it. Okay, you're going to speak to them? Yes. Okay. Please. I think I think you guys, ladies, should do more disciplinary and more management and leadership rather than chasing me around town all day long. I think we the town would be much better off that way. We'd have saved a lot of money in the long run. So take that under advisement. All right, I'm done for the moment until you get down to number two okay. on your agenda. <clears throat> well, all right, we're going to move on. We have a discussion, update discussion with the CIPC, and Mr. Eaton is here to talk to us. Before that, I would just like to make a quick comment about the highway department. We are uh, cleaning up the uh, campground again. Mm -hmm. uh, the highway department has agreed to leave a piece of equipment down there and Jim Bowes, the water superintendent, in his spare time is uh, brush hogging uh, the campground. Okay. Uh, great, the highway department just did it on their own. I just mentioned it to them a couple of months ago that we need to think about doing it and all of a sudden it's being done. So is it safe to leave a piece of equipment down they, there? They, they're keeping it secured and actually uh, uh, they, they, I asked them that, and they, they feel very comfortable. Okay. And it's, it's only going to be for three or four days. Oh, all right. Yeah. You have anything you'd like to add to that? Ms. Jim, if, if I may, yes. can you resort to, oh, refer to uh, public access again? Because I just have a, something I want to bring to the select board's attention. Sure. Um, the state law, national law, 40, chapter 57, it says for uh, people who are pay, not late in paying their taxes, but don't pay their taxes, they have to. We have to wait 12 months before we can implement 57, which is that they don't they they don't have uh, uh, access to permits. Uh, what else do they have? Permits. Uh, any kind of permits. Any kind of permits. Any any kind of permits. permits. Yeah. permits yeah. Right? <laughs> Mass, that has changed now. Apparently yeah. there is no time frame. Right. Uh, fortunately, our bylaws still has that 12 month wait on it. We, so we have to the have bylaw can't trump the state yeah. law. I know that, yeah. but we need to be clear. Jeff Blake though said we need to change our bylaws. Yes. And I agree with that. Yeah. Um, so I'm asking that the select board just um, initiate that and come up with a an article for the warrant. This is a, this is a great opportunity, I think, folks, to uh, reach out directly to the uh, former chair of the bylaw committee and ask them to schedule a meeting and let's include in a charge to them uh, alignment of this particular clause of our bylaws and that general law. But do we have to have, I know a lot of time when uh, the state supersedes the town bylaws, do we still have to make it a town bylaw? I think you do. Mm -hmm. I, I, I Jeff think Blake says you do too. Yeah, we have to be careful with, with that. When, when, it, uh, when it's specifically covered in our bylaws, sometimes home rule applies. Um, we probably want to check with Kate, it was BC law, but I think in this case we really want to try to get aligned with the Mass General Law, even if we just do it by adopting the Mass General Law as, as part of ours. But just so there's no yeah. confusion okay. between right. people and yeah. so right. if it comes to selecting we can do it real quick get it done get it on the uh, warrant yeah and we'll talk to the bylaw okay. chair yeah. Yeah. okay this is a very important thing mm -hmm. yes it is it, it, it goes well beyond we don't yeah. want to wait 12 months no. or anything like that and no nor nor because of mass general law we cannot Mm -hmm. Right, and so that it is important of the treasurer to keep a comprehensive list of those that are in arrears to the Correct. town, so that it is clear to the different issuing parties that in fact there there is this requirement. Correct. It also encompasses any outstanding parking tickets. Yeah. Fines. Yeah. Yeah. Fines. Et oh. Okay. All right. That's Thank all. Thank you for bringing all that right. to our attention. Okay, um, Kermit, you're on now. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I sent the select board a, a, uh, a memo recently. I just don't want to spend just a few minutes going over that. 
uh, the mission of Capital Improvement Planning Committee is essentially defined by our bylaws. So that describes what, what our role is. Um, we will be, to highlight that, we will be giving the select board a uh, recommendation for an annual capital expenditures as well as some projected capital expenditures over the five year period. Uh, critical to our success will be uh, getting credibility from the select board, the committees, the department heads, voters. Uh, so that's going to be a big focus of us to make sure that uh, we are not looking as another bureaucratic implementation, uh, but uh, supporting those organizations as well as the town. Uh, what I mentioned here in the memo was that we essentially have four products that we're going to deliver to the select board. One is an inventory of all capital as assets uh, defined by departments. That capital asset, re I mean that uh, inventory report will show you uh, what in equipment we have, uh, its, its expected life, what its condition is, when it might be replaced, and what its uh, potential replacement cost is. Uh, I think it's vital that we maintain that, and we're getting good support from the departments to give us that inventory mm -hmm. report. Probably good for insurance purposes as well. I think there also is a, a bylaw on the books that says every year um, the department have to have inventory lists, and I think they have to give them to the town town. We will. Uh, the town town is, is part of our. Yeah. Committee, so they will be getting that. Yeah, so yeah. people usually, that is, I'm pretty sure it is yeah. on the bylaws that they have to uh, turn it over once a year. Well, the last time we had a solid mm -hmm. inventory, Linda, was 2013, so we're a little okay. delinquent now. I know, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's what we'll have to do. Get, uh, get them to do so we will we'll be giving you an inventory. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to give you a projections of what we see the capital expenditures are going mm -hmm. to be. Critical to that is being able to define where funds are going to come to support those capital expenditures. So we will be making recommendations on uh, funding sources. Um, the last item under the products that we want to talk to you about a little bit is we're thinking of making recommendations on levels of debt, levels of stabilization. That's a little beyond the stretch of pure capital planning. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at perhaps what other towns are doing, what state recommends on levels for debt service and so forth. Uh, are you guys okay with us stepping into that breach? And, and, uh, and, uh, it, it is. I don't have any problem. Yeah, we'll, we'll just be making recommendations. Just I mean, recommendations. You, you guys. And then we'll make the decision. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't have any problem with that. Okay. But we will be, again, we will be using standards and recommendations from states. All right. Those things. Uh, the last page is the uh, timeline of the work uh, that we're going to do. That's obviously subject to change uh, as time goes on, but it details what we expect to do and what we're going to mm -hmm. get forward to you. Look at November 1. One of the things that we have on there is that we would like to meet with the town financial advisor. I'm assuming it's still Clock Rowell? Yes. Okay. And in conjunction with the advisory committee and to, to review our financial policies and update them. Is there any issue with that? Okay. So we will, we will try to put that together with the advisory committee. And I know there's a financial plan being developed for the town. Is that right? Uh, well, that's policy. the policy. Uh, the policy, sure. Yeah, and what we should policy. do is that this should yeah. we should insert this activity within that financial mm -hmm. policy. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Who are you? Who, who, well, I'm, I'm at the yeah. moment. I'm filling in the pieces of paper. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so, Clarence has yeah, been so if you could, on that. if you want to send me what you want inserted, we, what we can do is we can have that as a part of the ongoing meetings. Um, should the treasurer be the person who contacts uh, Clark Rawl to kind of? Oh, I would, I would keep it that way. Yeah, yeah. she. Yeah, the For treasurer sure. always has been contacting him. Okay. Just so there's a single line of communication. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, and the last thing, obviously, is what hasn't been done in the past is we want to present the capital plan 
at the annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. So the voters, the taxpayers, can see what looks like the future. So when they're making a decision about today, mm -hmm. they know here's coming down the road, there may be a fire truck three years yeah. from now and so forth. No, I think that's so, a good idea. So we would be presenting a brief, yeah, a, a brief plan. So we got transparency. Sure. I, I like yeah, that. I, I think that's excellent because it means we're actually going to be quiet with our own bylaws because that, that presentation of the plan that the council was actually required. Yeah, yeah. Beth, we're going to try to put your voice down a little bit. Okay, try that again, Beth. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, what I said was that that's a really good idea, in particular, because that's one of the things that's specifically in the bylaw related to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. So, that if they exist, they're supposed to report to the town, you know, what what the capital plan looks like. So it's great to incorporate that into our plan for, for town no, meeting. I, I think that is a good idea to report. All right. Any other questions? Thanks. So. Uh, thanks for your support on that. Okay. Well. Nick, do you have something else? To no, I'm all set. Thank you. Okay, you will. All righty. Our next on the agenda is 6 South Maple Street and 17 West Main Street property discussion. Madam Chairman, before I begin, I need to make sure that the, it's understood that in the case of any discussions on 6 South Maple Street that I'm involved in uh, things that are happening around that property so that under Mass General Law, Chapter 6, uh, 268A, mm -hmm. uh, Paragraph 23, small b, small th uh, and, uh, and number three, that I am in fact complaining about 6 South Maple Street, mm -hmm. so I need, need to recuse myself of any votes okay. uh, to, to be taken, if votes were to be taken. Um, the reason I ask that you add these uh, properties on the, uh, the uh, agenda for this morning is that I received complaints over the weekend mm -hmm. in the case of 6 South Maple that additional materials were deposited there and uh, in fact I've informed the zoning officer of that, that fact. The second that I received complaints on Sunday morning were relative to animals at 17 West Main Street and, uh, and that uh, neighbors there are uh, quite upset with the amount of noise that is being taken. Okay. Well, I had worked on this one. I, I worked on the second one when I found, when I saw your email. So I got going on that one right off. And we're thinking that should be under control. Okay. <clears throat> so, so the discussion is, I, I wasn't here last um, Wednesday evening, and um, <clears throat> I was told that there were no more permits down there on 6 South Maple Street, so nothing should be, no, everything should be ceased at that operation, and there should not be any of, uh, any materials or junk added down there. <coughs> That, that was my understanding of what transpired yeah. as well. Um, if the presumption is that the presence of that material is, is was a, a byproduct of the business that was authorized down there, and the use that was authorized down there, uh, that the use is no longer authorized, and honestly that jumped the way it's been left. It was not compliant even when the special yeah. permit was in effect. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that that property is very clearly not compliant. Mm -hmm. Does the still there? Uh, does the zoning enforcement officer have any um, anything to say where that's concerned? Well, the uh, ZBA ruled mm -hmm. uh, saying that the permit is invalid, so all operations should cease. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to clarify my take. I'm not. The operation has ceased June first. Now the shed has been shut down since then, so you can't be finding me. I'm running a yard sale down there, which I can do under the bylaws. So anything and everything I leave down there, I can do that. And you can't say anything. And he can't find me one dollar because the shed's been shut down, and I'm using I've been using a yard sale, and everybody knows that. Two, doesn't matter what the ZBA said. That was all based on personalities. We're going to Superior Court, and they will decide what takes place down there. Three, my permit is still valid down there. Even the town council tried to tell the ZBA board in a roundabout way that the permits are still good. Okay, you're on a witch hunt. 
You're trying to get the sign taken down. You're violating my civil rights in this town several times, and you will be. You. Uh, I'm speaking right now, Beth. So uh, don't even interrupt. Or I'll hang that phone up on you. I'll hang the phone up. That's enough, Dave. You're not hanging the phone up. Okay. Don't interrupt me. I'm speaking right now. If you're gonna be like. We'll run the meeting then. I'm speaking. You tell her not to interrupt me. Yeah, but you're not gonna raise. You're not gonna raise your voice to me. Okay. Listen. Do your job. You're gonna act, and you're gonna raise your voice to me, and maybe you should leave. Okay. So getting back to what I was saying. You violated, you violated my civil rights in this town several times and you, it will be addressed later at a later date. Okay, so I'm running a yard sale down on 6 South Maple, which I can do. Okay, the shed has been shut down. I've told you this before, before the fine started. Okay. Well, we, I was never told Nick that. Nick was informed of it. So there's no fines. What I'm doing down there is strictly under my yard sale. Nothing else. The yellow sign will continue. The yellow sign is going to continue after this town is spent 65 grand, and it, that's a, and you will be spending that amount. Trust me, maybe more, and nothing's going to change. Okay, you're on a witch hunt. You're on a witch hunt. The bottom line is because this man's a liar, and I called him out. No, that's enough, Dave. Stop. We're it. talking about the yellow sign. But I don't like. And that's what it's all a about. Liar. Okay, he it. didn't tell the truth then. Okay, how's that? Better. That's no, what it's it all about because he's on the yellow what? sign. No. That's the bottom line. So anyway, what is what I'm doing on Six South Maple is strictly a yard sale. Nothing more, nothing less. Well, how come and I'm charging? I and I am charging a penny for anyone that takes stuff. Well, I I was not aware that it had been closed down after June first. I, mm -hmm. I know. notified the ZEO officer well, in person twice, and I also notified this select board several meetings ago. No, well. I don't ever remember you saying that. Play the tapes back from Sharon. No, I, don't, I don't I don't I I re remember I reported that. to him and I told him to shut shut down. Did you know it had been shut yes. down? Joe yes. first? No no. He I mean he made uh, he made a lot of statements and Nick No you may have said I that. told you that the shed was shut down and I'm running on a yard mm -hmm. sale. Okay? And that's where we stand. And I'm going to continue putting my items down there under my yard sale, which I can do. And I will continue doing the yellow sign. And you can continue your witch hunt. Mm -hmm. And then we will go all go into court on many, well, many not, occasions. You're not in compliance then with the cease and desist order? No, there is not because I, the shed shut down. That's it. The, sh the shut well, down. I'm running the yard sale. Cease and desist has nothing to do with anything. As far as, I'm, as far as I am concerned, what came out of the hearing last week that the ZBA yeah, voted a, yeah, to, okay. uh, there would be no permits down there at all. I don't need a permit to run my yard sale window. I just told you that. Do you get this? Do you understand that? I I'm understand, running a I yard sale right Dave, now. Dave, I understand what happened last week. So we, we okay. both have difference of opinion. Right. You have your opinion, I okay. have my opinion. So we're not using the permit anymore. The permit is now on a standstill until the Superior Court makes a decision. Uh, okay? No. Right no, now, I'm running a yard sale, which I can continue <clears throat> to do. You cannot stop me from running my yard sale, and I will continue that, okay? And if I don't run a yard sale there, I'll find another spot to run a yard sale on, and you won't have anything to say about it, okay? You people in this town think that, you know, this little clique is going to dictate to people. It's no little clique in this town. We're trying to do the right things in this community. You can't violate my First Amendment, for one thing, and you can't violate the civil rights because you people don't like because I call you people out when you're doing wrong in well, this town. I don't That's what it's all about. No, it isn't. Of course it is. It's all about me telling Clarence that he didn't tell the truth. Yeah, That's sure. where the bottom uh, line Madam is. Chair, Madam, yeah. Madam Chairman, I would only, because I think I can yeah. say this, yes. is that there is a current cease and desist order yes, against 6 South, South Maple. And that cease and desist says that there should not be a secondary permit. Under Fruit. the permit that has been granted to them. You don't. I do not need a permit in town to have a gas sale on any property. Okay, so, so that's where we stand. So then I would then turn to the zoning enforcement officer and ask where he stands with the next level of enforcement of his cease and desist mm -hmm. at Six South Maple. What's the next level? You can go to court. You're going to go to court. Yeah, I, I actually am in favor at this point of going to court. Go for yeah. it. And I'll make, the, I'll make that motion to recommend that the zoning enforcement officer refer the unpaid fine I for, the pre, for the previous <clears throat> uh, non-compliance, the previous cease and uh, that, that that since Mr. Holcraft has failed to, has ignored the, the, the civil fines associated with his initial violation um, as originally interpreted of the special permit, that we go ahead and file for uh, uh, in the district court. Yeah, 
I, I'll make that, I will second that motion. Do we have any more discussion on this? I'm going to continue doing under the gas so you can't okay. violate me. Right. So you do what, you, 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 do what you, you feel. Oh, I will. Trust do. me, Linda. Okay, Trust me. Uh, Beth Trust Owen, me. Uh, Clarence can't. Um, oh, don't worry. He, we trust he cannot you. vote on this Good. for all At least favor. I call the truth, Clarence. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm. I. And so that's what it is. So now uh, Mr. Tomo, the uh, zoning enforcement officer, he has the right to go to the district court and file on this, on the cease and desist operation. And quite honestly, if we could speak about uh, seven, uh, 17 West Main just yeah. briefly, uh, that, that uh, in fact there could be injunctive relief at Superior Court as well if that act activity continues. Mm -hmm. Because she, because down there, in order to operate a kennel, she needs, you need to have a uh, special permit for that. Mm -hmm. That's fine. What you got to do? Yep. Yeah, any, anything that's a anything that's a commercial anything yeah. that's a commercial endeavor with yeah. regards to domestic animals is supposed to be um, a request for a special permit in that area. Yes. Not, not yeah. a request, but they, they, they need, need to they operate. Need to have, yeah. so they need it to be issued. Yeah, it, it needs to be issued. If she's, doing, if she's doing it commercially, yes. And I, I agree, think that has to commercial. go before the planning board, right? Yes. yes. It has if, to go if it's commercial, the yes. If yes. there are sales of dogs going on the property, yes. it is a commercial establishment. I, and it needs I, to come before the planning board. And I was also informed that she wants to have a grooming uh, business down there. No, that's not true. That's not true. That's more like something. You believe anything the wind blows this way, Linda? You believe no, it? No, I don't, Dave. Of course you do. Well, no, I don't. You, you believe anything that's you're told. A, Dave, that's enough. I don't want to argue. I with know. Dave. You don't want to hear the truth, right, Linda? I don't. Is that, is that, no, don't sure. I don't. I think we need to move no, on. We're, we're going to move on now. Okay, so anyway, we'll continue doing. You can go to court and do whatever you want. I'm going to continue doing on 6 South Maple like I have. Well, well you, okay. you keep on. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll let it be. We'll all sort it out in the Superior Court. It's an illegal operation as far as we're concerned. So do you want to just keep on doing it? And I'll tell you right now. Now, when we're all done and said, and the town's wasted 65 grand plus, which it'd probably be more, I'll still have my sign in. We'll still be doing what we're okay. doing now. All right. You do and what you, you, you two are supposed to be leaders of this town. You should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. You I should be ashamed of yourself, Clarence. You, you the do congregational you? church should be ashamed of you. That's too. enough. You, you well, that's because you're in that little group there. You, there. you do what you okay. have to do, Dave, and we'll do what we have to do. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, and you'll lose again. Who's really costing the town money, Dave? You people. Not you. Okay. That's correct. That's right. Because I have the guts to stand up for what's right. Mm -hmm. People fight hard for the First Amendment. We're not going to let it slide by because Brookfield thinks they can do what they want. Yeah, some of us even wear a uniform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, thank okay, you very that's much. Enough. Okay, yeah. our next one, we're moving on to a resignation. And this is a resignation that I really hate to accept. Yes. Um, it's. This is to serve notice that I am resigning from the advisory board and the bylaw committee. Thanks to all of you for reappointing me to these year's committees. Your trust in me is very much appreciated. It is with great regret that I must do this. And please know that if any time I can assist from home, please call. Again, thank you for making an old lady feel needed. No letter is needed back. And this was signed by Barbara Wilson. And this is a great loss to the town and a lot of knowledge goes along. She's probably been involved with the advisory board, I'd say for over 30 years. And she's been a big help. And I mean, the wealth of knowledge that Ms. Mrs. Wilson has is invaluable. And then she's also uh, resigning from the bylaw committee. And she's been very good on that also. But I'm hoping that she is, she has served on so many different boards and committees. She was an elected member to the uh, school committee and right now she's also still on the um, cultural council we hope that she will keep up her work on the cultural council uh, with the things that they do because she does an excellent job with that so karen i would like a letter sent out for her thanking her for everything mm -hmm. she's done for this community and she's going to be missed very much do you have anything to add to that? And, uh, the, the motion to accept her resignation yeah. uh, with regret. Yeah, Sincere regret. Oh. I'll, I'll second that and, and strongly support getting the letter out to her even though she said it's not required. No, no, I think she, she needs a letter out. All right, well, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 
All right, this next one is, it's a thing that goes on every year, it's to sign the Council on Aging Grant Allocation. And I would like to make a motion for the um, chairman to sign this. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on is the next one to uh, to sign a cemetery deed, and I would like a, a motion to entertain that. Motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have. You have one other at least. Another? Yep. Uh, yeah, another. There's a couple it, of them. Is this the one? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. This, on the other here, um, yeah. if we are going to, because um, you've been handling, if we're going to be continuing with the round table meeting. Yeah, so yes. uh, you said you wanted to take the next one. No, well, the next one I will if you want, but um, are you going to be working some more on the I want to jump back to the financial policy well, now that summer's over. Well, do you want to go on to that and then I'll take the phone on? Oh, sure. To you? Yep, absolutely. Okay. Because we got to get that going. And again. now I guess uh, Jeff Blake from KP Law wants to know also when we have the uh, hearings uh, on the 5th, September 5th, if we need to have him out here. He thinks we need to be. I, 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 I don't see a need, but. But uh, if, he, if he thinks we need to have this coverage, then we should do it. Yeah, we should do that. Okay, but well, we'll, uh, I'd like to have um, a motion to uh, call Jeff Blake and talk to him about this. Certainly. Second. Second. Can't, can't, can't. Sorry, I, can't, I couldn't hear what you guys were saying. I apologize. Sorry about that. This is about the uh, demolition, yeah. the three um, public hearings with, with respect to three buildings to be torn down. And, and Jeff's wondering whether or not he should be president, and Linda wants to talk to him. And I'm, I'm making a motion that Linda chat with him as to whether or not he okay, I could, needs to I be here. I can second that. Yeah, whether we really need him or not, because, uh, you know, I, I, I understand the concern, but I would think as long as we have some sort of a record of what was discussed, we yeah. should be okay. Yes, well, I will, I'm going to give, I'll get in touch with Jeff, mm -hmm. and then I will bring back uh, the findings to the board on the 5th. Yeah. But there are perhaps, a few questions I... If, if not have a present, then perhaps have someone available by phone. Yeah, he could be available yeah. by phone. Yeah. All right. I just so, have an email out to him asking him if he thinks it's necessary. He hasn't responded yet. I just... Well, I have a couple of questions on a couple of things where that was concerned. So, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And you have something? Uh, just real quick, I spent yesterday okay. morning at UMass Archaeology, and what I have is uh, re we reviewed the Phase Three report. We have copies of the uh, National Register of Historic Places registration and a, a beginning draft, which is the Phase Four, which we'll be talk I'll talk a little bit more about. But one of the things that comes out of uh, uh, the uh, dig is that. Essentially, uh, there's no building down there. There's no roadways. I mean, this is a bur an extensive burial, they call them features, but mm -hmm. a burial area. So it's it's going to be hard pressed, quite honestly, back to, back to the, and I'm, I'm staring at Kermit for a second, back to the brush hug hugging of the area. There are areas there that we really just want to go back wild, that we'll want to designate and to, to have them reforested, basically. Uh, and more for protection of the features, just to let it go wild. Um, we can talk about walking paths and those kinds of things. But it's it safe though for them to go down and bush hop it? No, it's safe to, certainly we've been doing it. Yeah. We've been keeping the place clean. And again, my congratulations and thanks to the yeah. people that have been doing that work. Um, 
but the reality is what we want probably want to do because of where the burials are and the significance of the numbers of features that are there that from a more of security perspective from a security perspective to in fact let the brush grow up keeps people away from where the burials are and so it may be a better idea to let it let it grow in certain areas and then have certain walking paths that we can designate uh, but uh, quite honestly um, the, the remaining buildings need to come down and it needs to be set aside. It's, there's, there's nothing that you're going to do there. Mr. Will, will the report clearance that comes out in September probably mention something like that? Yeah, well it's the beginning of it here, Kermit, and there's a map, uh, quite an extensive map that talk about the features that are there and, and where, where and how to stay away from different things. Can we turn so. this into some sort of outdoor museum, sort of? So my, my thought, if, if we pr continue initially with the town hall and to try to get to the second floor, that we've had offers of uh, materials to be donated to the town or at least on loan to the town, uh, that those could be up in the Great Hall under lock and key. And if we had some security and whatnot, it would be a good way to display that, at least initially, mm -hmm. and see if we can kind of get some traction with that. But it really, uh, quite honestly, you're talking a, a cultural center. I mean, yeah. it's it's oh, yeah. that big a deal, or it could be that big a deal. It's Again, probably the only one. Oh, it's re it. it is regionally, it is significant, yeah. and uh, anyway, so uh, good pause the meeting. What will be happening is um, Mass Historic guys are going to be with, uh, I mean, uh, Mass UMass Historic guys are going to be with Mass Historic yeah. on Monday. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, I'm sorry, Tuesday. Uh, they'll get the uh, report approved. We'll pay for the phase three, okay. uh, and then between now and the 15th of September, they'll finish the. And what one of the part, parts of the meeting for next Tuesday is to go through the National Register of Historic Places registration, this document, to make sure that th because this is essentially phase four. Now, are they uh, going to be up there next Tuesday? They're going to be in Boston. Oh, in Boston. Okay. So UMass yeah. goes to Boston. Okay. They get approval of the phase three and then we can pay them the four thousand dollars that we owe them and then what will happen between now and the 15th it'll be uh, mass historical will be given this document on Tuesday, this uh, historic mm -hmm. place the registration form and that that needs to get any updates between now and the 15th of september mm -hmm. and with that we'll get an invoice on the 15th of, or thereabouts the 15th of september to pay the last i think it's another four thousand dollars that closes out the town has now paid the thirty-five thousand, mm -hmm. and with that, we'll get the seventeen-five back. Well, that's good. Well, I would like to thank you for all your hard work that you've done on thank this, you. and going to meetings and to Boston and to above and beyond. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Beth. Okay. So, I appreciate the time this morning. Okay. All right. Do we have anything else under other? Is that it? That was just <laughs> well, well, so one thing I would ask is just a one little administrative thing. If in the future, we can try to avoid this. Well, I had I had something going earlier, Beth, in the day, so this is why I suggested, you know, eleven o'clock, so that we okay. could, you know, get caught up on a few things, so uh, we have enough. It, 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 just on Thursday. Just on Thursday. Just on Thursday. Okay. Reference. All right. If we can try to avoid it in the future, that would be great. That will, yeah, we so. will. Okay. Thank you for your input on that, and thank you for joining in on the meeting. Oh, Sharon has one. Uh, permission to approach the table. Yes, sure. you have permission. Thank you. you have permission to sit I'm down. I'm not on the uh, list of I have my planning board hat on right okay. now, and the board has gotten a memo from me by email uh, outlining what's happening with the zoning bylaw revision process. Um, and for the benefit of the camera, the CMRPC has agreed um, some time ago to help us look at the zoning bylaws, find discrepancies that mm -hmm. should be addressed. Um, conflicts with the town bylaws and with mass general law yeah. and also to bring them up to date basically into the 21st century. We've received money from the town for that to the tune of $2,000. We're going to be using some of our CMRPC merit hours for that as well. Um, Chris Ryan, who is the facilitator for this process from the CMRPC, is, would like to come to Brookfield 
and meet with a core group of people who work with or are affected by the zoning bylaws. And I have asked that the select board um, consider sending one of your number as a part of that group. This would be a single meeting. Chris would present his findings, the CMRPC's findings for the zoning bylaws, that the review that they've done, and there would be a discussion about where we went from here. And he thought it would be useful if people who are involved with that um, could attend. And obviously it would be a public meeting as well. So I would ask the board to consider um, one of you committing to this and giving me a specific time of day and day of the week where this would be possible because we have not set a date yet. I'm trying to get as many people there would as possible. Would they come out here to do it? Or yes, they are coming out to Brookfield. Well, if you want me to come and be the point person, I will do that. That's great, Linda. I appreciate it. And I'll be in touch with okay. you about the date and the time. The other parties that he has suggested to be there is uh, someone from the ZBA, uh, the Zoning Enforcement Officer, mm -hmm. Um, the building inspector, Jeff Taylor, said he cannot attend, but he is going to send written recommendations and okay. he wants some feedback. He wants the feedback delivered to him, so he'll be kept in the loop. Mm -hmm. And um, the select board, of course. So, um, this and possibly the bylaw committee, because if there were kind If it can be set for between like 10 and noon, or actually any time before noon on either a Tuesday or a Wednesday, then yeah. that would be great. Um, I'd like to attend as well, so if, if both Linda and I go, um, could we post it as a meeting just for the sake of, of covering it? would that, have to be. to get some of this information as well. I think that, that would be possible. Yeah. Yeah, Beth. Uh, I mean, the more the merrier. Yes. It, you know, the more stakeholders, as they call them, who are involved with this process, the more comprehensive it will be. Um, I don't know if CIPC would like to attend, send a rep, but that would be fine too. You know, I have no objection. The more people who show up, and listen to this report, I think the better for the town it will be. Mm -hmm. So, uh, before noon on Tuesday or Wednesday is best for you, Beth, correct? Yeah, yeah, it's before morning, Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday is best for me. Uh, <coughs> Monday and, uh, no, Tuesday and Wednesday are good for me. Probably, say, even if you did one about 10.30, 10, 10.30 in that area. Okay. And just let me know ahead of time. I will. And I'll just keep my clock. It's going to be calendar. posted as a meeting, and I will send a memo okay. out to everybody who's agreed okay. to Okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. All right, Sharon. Thank, Thank you very much. But Sharon reminded me, so yeah. let me put a plug in for the open space and recreation mm -hmm. plan okay. survey that's around. Yeah. Uh, you can find uh, a link on the, uh, Facebook to it, or you can find hard copies in the lobby. Oh, I and had one sent. For me? Uh, I had one that was sent out. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Said. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. going around everybody. We're looking yeah. for 80 respondents. And now, when do they have to be back? September 4th. September so, this 4th. is a plug to okay. have All people right. do that. Okay. Yep. I've got one more thing okay. when you're ready. If you're ready for me. Uh, sure. Okay. Um, currently, <coughs> with the core rechecks, I am still listed as the administrator. Yeah. So, um, and Sandy was a user and she passed on, so they need it's someone expensive. to do the. Corey check for the new employees. Uh, I'm in the middle of switching it over to Lonnie, I guess she's going to be doing it. The question I ask is, I have is that do you want uh, Lonnie to be administrator, you want her to be the user, you want me to stay as the administrator, or you want to put someone else in the administrator? Uh, so I think you guys need to discuss this a little bit. If you want, see what direction you want to go in with this. All right, so. Yeah, so we want to You don't have to do it right now. Yeah, you we want to talk to, I'm long yeah. away, and when she comes back, that's something we'll talk to her about. Okay. Yeah, the two of you ought to just flip the coin, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever you want to yeah. do it. So, okay, it's up to you guys. Excellent. Okay, Nick, thank that's you. That's all. Lonnie should probably be the administrator. Hmm? Lonnie should probably be the administrator. And then Holly could be the Holly. user. Yeah. Okay, so we're done. Okay, now in correspondence, um, Al Jones, our uh, assistant assessor, recently received a $500 scholarship from the Mass Association of Assessing Offices and he used it to fund his recent five-day class at UMass and I'd like to congratulate Al for doing this and it was nice uh, from the association to uh, give him this, this money so he could go and it saved the town so Excellent. thank you to them. So if nothing else is on the agenda I would like to uh, motion to motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Yeah, second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye.